And our panel that is going to be with us uh, with these huge developments uh, this hour, and of course the president's legal team, uh, Stephen Binhock served as associate independent counsel on Ken Starr's Whitewater investigation of President Bill Clinton. Paul Rosenzweig served as senior counsel to Ken Starr on the Whitewater investigation of President Bill Clinton, and Joe Lockhart served as President Bill Clinton's White House press secretary during the impeachment uh, trial. Joe, you're with me. Let me start with these uh, new documents. So you hear some of what Evan's going through, and as, as I think Evan and I are emphasizing, there's more that could be transmitted, right? They have a deadline tomorrow. Anything they can get in before is part of the trial. Anything after becomes under discussion by the Senate as to whether to admit it. Um, Nothing has changed. She is still not moving. It's confirmed. She's been there since Thursday night, never left the embassy. Uh, these are the text messages between Robert Hyde, uh, who was working with Lev Parnas and Rudy Giuliani, and some uh, number in Belgium. Right. Listen, it just further solidifies this idea that there was a surveillance operation. Now, we don't know why they were surveilling and what their intent was, but this is a very serious thing when a member of the U.S. government, a U.S. ambassador, is being surveilled by some pretty shady characters. You know, maybe they just wanted to know when she left, or maybe they had something more sinister in mind. I, you know, I think the, the really striking part about this is the Secretary of State has spent this week talking about how he doesn't know Lev Parnas and hasn't said a word about how disturbing it is that people from the outside, who we don't know who they are, but some Belgian number, were stalking the, our ambassador and perhaps thinking of doing her harm. I mean, the Secretary of State is sending a message to all the ambassadors and career foreign service officers that they don't matter, that only the politics of Donald Trump matter. I mean, it is, it is, it is a pretty incredible thing, Stephen, um, not just the, the, the silence of Mike Pompeo, right? I mean, who runs the Secretary of State. This is the, his ambassador who's being surveilled by somebody at the behest of Rudy Giuliani that he didn't know about, ostensibly, at least as far as, far as he says. What does this mean, Stephen, for the case? This evidence will be admitted uh, because it's coming in before the deadline. But what does this do to the whole Senate trial, to the situation with witnesses? Well, I think what's very important is we have this debate over whether there will be witnesses at all, and we're moving towards a discussion and a vote on that. And it is pretty clear that uh, as more and more evidence comes in that is new, there's more pressure on everyone to get to the bottom of it and therefore more pressure for evidence. So it doesn't surprise me that the House Democrats would want to do this uh, on the eve of the impeachment, in the impeachment. And it also wouldn't surprise me that Mr. Parnas, who has his own legal problems, would want to try to make as many friends as possible as he can by giving out important information um, that could be relevant to the question at hand. And Paul, of course, you know, this is this is Parnas's information, right? He's got uh, these texts that we're finding out. He's got more pictures. He's got... Uh, you know, proof that uh, Devin Nunes's aides were very tightly tied into this whole Ukraine situation, despite the, you know, offended protestations of, you know, protests of, of Devin Nunes. Uh, and that is also in here. Um, what does this do to the calculus in the Senate as more information comes out? I'm just showing right now some of the new photos that are just being released. Well, I, I think that the answer to that is really pretty simple. Uh, Republican senators have to ask themselves whether this is the last tranche of evidence that will come out with respect to this uh, Ukrainian affair. And I think that the likely answer is no. Even if it doesn't come in as part of the impeachment trial, they are going to own whatever comes hereafter based upon what they decide to do in terms of conducting an investigation. If they close their eyes now, then the evidence that comes out in six weeks or eight weeks from uh, from Parnas or from one of his colleagues will be further part of their legacy. So it ramps up on them the pressure mm. to make a very realistic decision about whether or not they think that the everything that's come out so far is all that there's going to be. And they have to say that that's a no. Right. I mean, it has to be a no. It, it certainly seems that way. And of course, history will judge by the totality of the evidence, not what they chose to uh, see as the evidence, to your point. And Evan, you know, I referenced Evan Nunes, who, of course, is the top Republican on the Intelligence Committee. And now in this information uh, is is documents that implicate him as involved intricately in this entire thing, despite the fact that at first he had said that was just absurd and insulting that anyone would ever say such thing. Uh, this is this is showing that 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 was not true. Yeah, I think uh, in, uh, originally Devin Nunes tried to say that he didn't remember having any any interaction with uh, with Lev Parnas. And look, the fact is, Lev Parnas is indicted. 
uh, there's a lot of people who would question whether or not he's telling the truth. And here, he's producing some of the information that shows that at least in, on some of these things, he is telling the truth. And one of the things that you're referencing is the fact that he is t closely coordinating with Derek Harvey. This is a, an aide to Devin Nunes on this conspiracy theory that the Ukrainians essentially were interfering in the 2016 election. It's something that the president, as you know, Aaron, has been pushing. The Russian uh, intelligence services have been behind this. Uh, this theory. Uh, and so there is some effort being made uh, by uh, Devin Nunes' aide to coordinate with Lev Parnas. You see these interactions, you see these messages, you can see that on, in this evidence that's been produced, showing that there is close coordination in trying to pr uh, pr propagate these theories that we now see uh, are everywhere, especially uh, on Russian television and uh, in certain parts of the right-wing press. And Stephen, what, what do you make of, of Mike Pompeo's silence on this? You know, if, if you have now, you know, increasing evidence that there was an American citizen conspiring with others to surveil the uh, a sitting U.S. ambassador and that she was under surveillance and he has so far said nothing. Well, I think all, not just Secretary Pompeo, but all of the uh, members of the, of the Trump administration now are, are playing a little bit of a catch up game. They really don't know what's out there. They have decided to def to defend the president and stick with the administration, and they just don't want to get caught out far on a ledge. You know, it's interesting. It makes me think a little back to the Nixon um, uh, uh, impeachment, and I wasn't I was a really little kid then. But the fact of the matter is, the the facts changed the politics over time, and as things got worse, ultimately. Uh, uh, President Nixon's uh, popularity went down and ultimately, uh, you know, his own party came to him and said, it's time to go. We can't defend you anymore. The question here is, is this evidence going to be so serious and the evidence that will come, as Paul says, will it be so serious that it can actually change the, the politics of this? Remember, p impeachment is a political process. It starts with substance. You can't even start an impeachment until you get to uh, substance, but the politics can change based on the yeah. substance. Well, you know, and it's fascinating also as you see this whole game of how long this will go. And even now, as, as we are literally on the, the eve here, working days of this trial, there is still so much we do not know of the timing and the strategy and, and what you're saying plays into that, how much time Mitch McConnell thinks he has or does not have. Uh, all of you, please stay with me. Next, President